Sold these today, John Fluvog shoes. Sold for 250, my profit margin after fees and et cetera on Poshmark was 200. And then I got these for like 15. So made a lot of money on these. As you know, I don't really sell that many shoes. Something like this is absolutely the kind of thing that I will bother to sell. There's the logo. I know that this is a really significant designer shoe brand. Uh, there's some history behind it that I don't know. And this is Gator Skin. That's real gator skin and it's purple and then it has the leather with the studding and those are chrome metallic heels. You can tell just looking at these that there's something that's worth money. A pair of Hang 10 shorts, 15 bucks. My Poshmark sales have been a little more steady. They're still not stellar. Same with eBay. My sales are a little bit down because I've been focused on whatnot to the point where I have very little activity on either account. I'm gonna start listing more I've had great luck flipping Iron Man clothing. The brand of the clothing itself is not super relevant. If it's a nicer brand, like if it was Bon, bon Treasure or something, um, which is, I think like a higher end cycling brand, it would probably add some value. But even so, 25 bucks, Sportech is not a good brand. Iron Man has a big following, I guess. Picked this up a while back, I thought it would be a quick flipper, but it wasn't. I must have gotten it out of season. It was probably over the winter. Hawaiian Island Creations. There's the tag. I think it's still decent, and this is the time of the year for it. Anything surf related, or really anything shorts, is going to be right around now. Excuse me. Basic Under Armour tank for women. Pick this up at the bins, have next to nothing into it, flip for nine bucks. Graphic t-shirt from Jimmy Buffett. A lot of the Margaritaville stuff just doesn't uh, fetch all that much money, but this was a fairly rare t-shirt. It had some bleach marks on it. Still flipped for 20 bucks. Fox Racing jersey. This is a motocross jersey, pretty sure. Um, I think the zippered back means it's motocross. You can just kind of tell looking at it. Might be mountain biking. I don't remember. Yeah, mountain biking jersey. Uh, 20 bucks. Yeah, mountain biking, not motocross. Don't know what I'm talking about. I always like to brag a little bit when I sell these uh, Performance Merino brands that have holes in them. Ibex is a just superb brand. One of the top selling brands. One of the ones I have in my back pocket, you know, that I'm hoping to find in any condition, really. 30 bucks. Still flipped for 30 bucks within a month of listing it. Pick this up for probably seven or eight bucks at a Goodwill. This one took a while to flip. It is a bins pickup. Has a weird graphic on the front. The brand is Clockwork Gears. I don't remember the sell through on Clockwork Gears and had a couple little light spots flip for 15 bucks. Basic kind of lime green crop sleeve Land's End women's button up shirt, 11 bucks. I've said a few times that I like picking up Land's End at the bins. This is one such case. It still doesn't flip all that quick. You can still not expect to sell it within a couple of weeks, probably take two or three months, depending on seasonality and what it is. And vintage Land's End probably does better. Um, but you know, 11 bucks for next to nothing at the bins. Pretty good. Actually picked up a shirt very much like this today. $33 for the John Varvatos snap front Henley shirt, size medium. This is my favorite thing to find from John Varvatos, these Henley shirts, especially the long sleeve ones, and also suits and vests do great. The button up shirts are a real hit and miss for me. Everything else seems to do quite well. 33 bucks is really healthy for not that significant of a piece. This took absolutely forever to flip. You can tell it has a white background. This is one of my last remaining white background items. And I picked it up at the swap meet. It had a little grease spot on the front. Finally sold for 10 bucks. Probably had it for at least a year and a half, maybe two years. Robert Graham said it a few times. People disagree. Careful what you pick up and careful how you price it. You can still make money with Robert Graham. I still pick it up, but it's not the hole in one that it used to be. Pair of shoes flip for 25. I think I got these because they were basically brand new and I was just kind of running on a hunch. Polo, Ralph Lauren, that is vintage. The Auric wingtip flip for $25. I had these for a while. Don't remember how much I got them for or where I got them. I don't like selling shoes at this price point anymore. This is a new with tags pair of Kevlar jeans by Shift. Let's see if I put Kevlar in the title. 
showed it in the photos here. On eBay, it is a Vero term. You don't want to say Kevlar. On here, I did say Kevlar because I am less concerned about jeopardizing my Poshmark account than my eBay account. And I don't think that these brands are quite as punitive on Poshmark as they are on eBay. 40 bucks, pretty good. I got this at the bins for probably two and a half bucks or so. Basic Xenia suit flipped for 50. It had a hole on the back collar that I didn't see when I sourced it, which is why I let it go for 50. Normally would have priced this at 100, probably would have flipped it for 85.80. 50 bucks, I don't remember what I got this for. It could have been 10, 15 bucks. Turned it into 50 on Posh. Still okay. We're on eBay now. This one sold today also for 15. Uh, listed at 18, as you can see, it is a Wrangler fishing shirt. So I've given you this tip a few times where if you find a shirt like this that has kind of a mesh venting, maybe it has a caped vented back or it's vented under the arms and it has two big chest pockets on it and it's made of a performance fabric. If you use the term fishing in the title as a keyword, it can greatly expedite how quickly it sells. It has those, you can't really see them, but two chest pockets, and it's clearly an outdoor shirt. I'll use hiking and I'll especially use fishing. That's one of my favorite ever keywords to use. And it flipped fairly quickly. This was a bins pickup, probably took a couple months to sell. And we're in the time of year when this kind of thing sells quite well. A pair of Fox racing shorts. This is just a basic pair of chino shorts. You typically find uh, like cycling shorts or motocross shorts or board shorts. You don't find chinos all that often. Still flip for 20 bucks. This is a favorite, perennial favorite bread and butter brand for me. I find a lot of it, I think because the Fox racetrack, or at least one of them is local. It might be a locally based company, which I didn't know until I drove past it on my way to the gemstone mine. So that's the logo. I've had great consistent luck with this ever since I kind of keyed in on it as a Bolo brand and don't pay up for it unless it's new with tags. But if you can find it at the bins, if you can find it for less than a couple bucks, I would just pick it up regardless. I find Comic-Con stuff quite a lot, actually. Not all of the time, but I do find it from time to time. This is a basic t-shirt from the Comic-Con Museum, which I still have not been to. Sold for, let's see, four, yeah, it sold for full price, 14 bucks. It had some uneven coloration on it. Comic-Con stuff sells okay. If you can find exclusives from Comic-Con in the form of t-shirts or swag or other promotional items, limited run figures, stuff like that, that can be worth quite a bit of money. I apparently just sold a book, a Comic-Con exclusive book from 2015, a copy of Man in the High Castle by P.K. Dick on my book whatnot. So you do find these things, especially if you live in San Diego. Seasonality is really important with clothing sales, until it isn't. This is a pair of snow pants for kids that I picked up at the bins. Sat for a while, uh, still flip for 20 bucks. If I pick something up that's out of season, I will typically just list it. I will wanna move it because periodically you do get these dramatically out of season sales. People shop proactively, they wanna get a good deal when it's out of season, which is a smart thing to do. And uh, you get a lot of international sales of this stuff too, when it's out of season. Here's an interesting one. This is one, I don't remember when I picked it up. I don't know if I would do it again. The brand is Onia, O-N-I-A. I think I looked it up and the sell through was good at the time. It flipped for 17, I think. That's a brand to maybe look up if you find it. I got this pair of Tevas for free. I don't remember where or why I got them for free, but they didn't sell, they didn't sit for all that long, actually. My memory is foggy on this one. Flip for 35, so pure profit. Tevas are a good bolo brand. I, again, don't sell that many shoes, but because I had them, I listed them, and out the door they went. This sold for 30. Could maybe have listed it for a little bit more, but there were other active comps of this same exact shirt. So I priced it competitively. It has this cool graphic on it. Anytime you find Hawaiian shirts that look really bizarre, really outlandish, or have striking graphics like this that aren't just boats on the ocean with palm trees, but something weirder or uh, location specific. SeaWorld, actually Rain Spooner or SeaWorld Hawaiian shirts I have found, and those have sold for good money. And the Hotel Dell, which is a local landmark, also by Rain Spooner has sold quite well. This is the Guy Buffett collection. I don't know 
much about that, but it is vintage. No surprise, flip for 30 bucks and flip pretty quick. Here's a John Varvato suit, sold for full asking price, 99 bucks. I like to price at the 99 price point for two piece suits. Sometimes you're a little undergone, sometimes that's about right. It's generally like a competitive price for a decent suit and I like to price around there because I like to do a little bit of a quicker flip on suits. Instead of sitting around to get 150 out of it, I would rather just get it out the door for 100. Sale on Nike Pro stuff has definitely slowed down. I've issued a couple of warnings about this and lit a couple of road flares around the Nike Pro disaster. This used to be an awesome resale brand, especially Nike Pro Combat. It's still okay, but it's real hit and miss and I don't pay more than like a buck or two for this stuff anymore. So this was a Ben's pickup. I think I flipped it for 15. Basic long sleeve active shirt. There's just so much competition on eBay with Nike Pro stuff now. Also a Ben's pickup. This is a pair of 100% linen jogger pants, cargo jogger lounge pants. A lot of keywords there. Also one that I picked up at the bins. Anything that you see me sell that is women's clothing is almost certainly from the bins. That's one of the nice things. I guess a double-edged sword thing when it comes to the bins is that it kind of forces you to sell both men's and women's. But when you know a little bit about both, you can get some easy money, which this one was. Nicole Miller is, as far as I can tell, not a superb resale brand, but 100% linen and it's super on trend. I think this is, um, very popular in terms of style. Rolling Stones shirt, 15 bucks, had it up on eBay. This kind of a thing, these days I would probably just flip on whatnot. But these popular band shirts, even this kind of DIY thing, this is a, there's a term for this. It's not cut out. It's uh, when you use scissors and you have an unfinished edge in uh, the sleeves or the collar or the, the hem. It's like a crop top, DIY crop top thing. It had a hole in it. It kind of goes to the look. This bleach splattering or bleach dyeing is pretty uh, on trend. Tie dye, still really popular. Not in great shape, but still flip for 15. Flip this one, finally, you can tell from the wood background, it's an older product. Paul Smith, I've had such spotty luck with. I really don't pick it up all that often anymore unless it's in immaculate condition and the seasonality is right, the price is right. Um, like this, I would still pick up at the bins if I found it, but I'm not going to spend 10 bucks on this, even though it's hundred uh, percent, what is probably no hundred percent wool, viscose lined and it had a little stain on the lining, but that shouldn't have taken as long as it did to sell this pair of Laura Piana women's pants that I was so thrilled about in the haul video where I got them. Those photos are embarrassingly overexposed. I guess I was not being careful. It's tough with like the lighter color fabric sometimes not to do that. They flip for 85 and I triggered a return on them, or I guess I didn't trigger it, but I got a return on them. She said that it just fit too tightly around the thighs. So it goes. I am still confident that that will sell. If you find this tag, still pick it up. Doesn't matter what it is. It's gonna be worth some decent money. This is not worth as much as I had hoped, but especially if you find it in a nice luxury fabric. And I think the men's stuff is worth a little more than the women's stuff. That's just my gut feeling about it. Um, you can stand to make quite a bit of money. This is the Laura Piana mainline tag. You also find the fabric tag, usually in suits, dress pants. It has the black, green, red, and yellow insignia. That is still worth it. It's not worth as much as this Laura Piana mainline tag. These Dickies slacks all of a sudden started selling in this one size, the khaki size 13 slacks. I've sold uh, three or four pairs of these. This person ordered two for a total of 50 bucks, I think, 25 each. I picked these up for two or two and a half bucks each on a tag sale day. 32 degree heat is a very assy brand. It's really not good but I got three of these at the bins and they were new with tags. I think most of them had flaws. And this is another one that sold out of season for 25 bucks. Not a whole lot of margin on that, but my cost of goods was low enough that it was still worth it. These sold on an offer for 16 bucks, 19 cents. I got them for $1, a Nike Pro piece. They are men's compression pants, which I know because I looked up the style code. This number right here, 
the 828-535-331 number. That's the style code and the, the colorway code. The first string of six integers is the style. That'll give you the name of the cut of the garment, and then the last three numbers are the color. So if you search the whole thing and nothing comes up, try just doing the first six, and you are more likely to get a name match. These sold for $35.99 on a 10% off offer. It is Outer Known and Levi's. Outer Known is the Kelly Slater line of clothing. He's a surfer. And the, I think, mainline Outer Known stuff might be a little more desired than the Levi's collaborations. I think I've found two of these. And um, still sold for 36 bucks, which is pretty great for a used pair of swim trunks. This is another brand that I pick up every single time that I find it, as long as something is not super awry, as long as it's not really overpriced or there's a really bad flaw. This flipped for 26 before 4th of July. I think that's probably what flipped it. It's from Stone Brewing, which is a local brewery that I guess just got acquired because they were circling the drain. They're not as popular as they were before. Back in like, I don't know, early 2000s or, or 2010s rather, this was one of the biggest breweries in the country, certainly regionally because it's based here. It was inescapable. There were the arch hop, hops men and women. They're the ones who turned beer uh, unbearably hoppy. They are to blame. So I think the 4th of July sold it. I set aside a bunch of 4th of July stuff in a bag in my closet to list when it was more seasonally in demand and forgot to list it. So I think that's a mistake. I think I'm just gonna list all the stuff that I get when I get it. Like I said, Whatnot has been occupying the lion's share of my reselling time and energy, and it takes a lot of that, all the above. So I have the process a little more streamlined than I did when I first started selling on Whatnot, and um, that means I will have a little bit more time freed up to list some stuff on eBay and Poshmark. My strategy now is I'm going for the stuff that eBay is really, really hungry for, so the really crazy in-demand stuff, um, like 2x, 3x sell through items and the higher dollar items that I could flip on whatnot, but I would like to realize the a bigger portion of profit out of than flipping it for 10 or 15 bucks on whatnot. So the whatnot is still going. Um, the next one will be today, actually when you're seeing this video at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and I hope to see you there. Appreciate you watching.